You're tuned in to RX Radio. Movement prescribed. Brought to you by Prescript.com. A personalized approach to keeping you healthy and making your best even better. Your hosts, Dr. Jordan Shallow and Dr. Jordan Jinta. I feel bad. Yeah, and I don't say that often because I feel bad that we grew up in a time where I'm no, I was no different from people getting into fitness now in the sense of how easily I could be influenced to adopt a thought process when you have no thought process. Yeah. It's just we were so lucky that the prevailing thought process for the most part, like if we had to sift through the signal versus the noise, the signal was much stronger for people who were in it enough, A, to be piped into a place where you could even find information. But also on the flip side of that, on the B side is like people who were so into it that they could get information and were motivated to get information out there. So, you know, when we grew up, we were talking like Poliquin was it for me. Tibbs was another one. Yeah. And then, you know, you get into Louie and maybe a Dave Tate, lead FTS. But these were people who on both sides were met and maybe not met with like obstacles, but didn't have the same ease and accessibility to both distribute and consume information. Yeah, I think like what it is now is is you live in an age of like a all media is almost amateur media now, right? It's like crowdsourced media. Whereas back then, in order to be a voice of anything, you had to like come off a stage or a platform or work for a team for a place to reach out to you to ask you what you know. It's like, what, like you mentioned like Thibodeau, it's like Thibodeau wrote for T Nation. Like T Nation got Thibodeau to write for them. Thibodeau didn't have Thibodeau's website where he just posted his own videos and like articles that he decided were, you know, important, right? And Poliquin had the backing of, well, all these people that he made huge and strong. Whereas nowadays, like I just make, I can make seven Instagrammers right now. Right. Yeah. So like in the same way, TV has decentralized into Netflix and yeah. then someone can come up and like, I think amateur is maybe a used word, not to necessarily like dispute quality. No but to dispute like a conventional model around building reputation. Like you see it in conventional news, right? Like there's so many people that are just doing news on YouTube, right? That aren't like a friend of the show. Sauger does a bunch of you, uh, like yeah. YouTube news. So shout out Sauger. And it's, he's not on CNN, mm -hmm. right? And so like the platforms are more universal, easily accessible from both ends. I think it just makes it more difficult and it's, it's bad because I've had to catch myself like judging other people, honestly, yeah. is what it is. Cause like we've spent, I don't know, I've spent more of my life in fitness than not at this mm -hmm. stage, like at this stage in the game. So it's like when I see people getting into it and falling into these traps, it's been hard for me to catch myself and be like, yo, like I've gone on record and been like, I didn't do, I didn't deviate from this particular method of training, which was maybe it was a Thibodeauism, maybe mm -hmm. it was a Poliquinism. You know, maybe it was something Paul checks early days before he started stacking, stacking rocks, rocks and marrying everyone, which I think we're going to try and pop all the show. So maybe not throw yeah. too much shade, but like we were so lucky, I think mm -hmm. looking back, cause I'm like, yo, I really like, I was getting so frustrated with these people. Like, Hey, I saw this on what's a YouTube channel. And it's crazy to me. Like, cause I'm so blind to it now. Like, um, Guzman, is that a thing? Christian? Guzman. Uh, Lundo, can you look up Guzman YouTube Fitness? I want to say that's a guy. That. Dude, is that a guy? Even if it's not, it will be. It is now. Well, I know he's in a drug cartel. Oh, the Zed. Zed. That was the whitest way to spell Guzman. Serbian. That's what <laughs> that was, I figured. Oh, my God. <laughs> is, is that a guy? Uh, yeah, here 985,000. I have no idea how to say his name. Yeah, look at him. He's like a piece of paper sideways with all those uh, striations, though. Yeah, I mean, he looks great and he probably has great content. But I guarantee you, we could spend some time on YouTube and find some absolute trash. If I was, so no shade his way. But if I go through your stuff and I find it dog shit, I will absolutely throw shade on the show. But, you know, nothing against him. He's got a rig on him, sure. He looks good. But you couldn't go on T Nation and find bad information. No. Right? Relatively speaking, sure. The Poliquin stuff. We've all taken enough vitamin D at one point in our lives where we actually started to glow in the dark. Yeah. But 
you know, that was, it was such a vetting process. Now we're to find a vetting process like that. Unfortunately or fortunately, it's all behind paywalls. And I, yeah. And I think the other thing too, like if we look at this guy, Guzman, and again, no shade to this dude, but this guy is like post the Z's era of fitness, right? So wait, hold on. You're going to, now this is interesting because let's look at this like AD and BC. Sure. Right. Well, I, you're yeah. gonna say Z's is the not necessarily the catalyst, but an indicator of time. Oh, 100 percent. Really? I think that is the sole indicator of time is Z's. What an influential figure he. R.I.P. Yeah. We've all been on simplyshredded.com and seen pictures of Z's. If you haven't, you haven't. Have you looked? <laughs> Dude, just look it up. <laughs> That's okay. Interesting. I never would have used him as the as the turning point. But I see. So I look at Z's. R.I.P. I don't. Pour out some pre-workout. Yeah, the pour out some pre-workout <laughs> in Ibiza for him. But <laughs> fuck me, I definitely don't have diesel briefs in my drawer because of that guy. But like looking at Z's, this dude is definitely a post Z's era guy. You know what I mean? Like we got the well, look aesthetics, at this kind of photo, right? the Zane like, yeah, we've got this weird elbow high pose thing going on. And it's like that opened up fitness and training to a whole new demographic of people who weren't into being bald, weren't into having a goatee. And weren't into walking around with chains and dirt on the floor. Yeah. Where it's like, think about like where we came from with T Nation. Like I myself didn't want to be bald with a goatee and work out in some dungeon, but I could respect it. And for some reason that was credibility to me. Yeah. I was like, it was street cred. Yeah. It looked gangster. <laughs> exactly. It was like dudes who looked like my old man, like lifting weights. And I was like, oh, these guys fuck shit up. Right. I'll listen to these guys. But it's an, you got to think of like that age difference. Right. And then you get like the post Z's era. And they're not looking to look like look like those guys. So immediately there's no credibility to that information to them because it's not driving those people. It's not a vehicle for the direction they want to go. Well, it's really interesting looking at his YouTube heading right now. And like, I don't want to make this like a like a, an expose piece or anything, but this to He's me- He's an archetype. It, well, this, dude, this might as well be a marketing campaign from a major department store. What are we looking at here, right? Like there's him in the white shirt. There's him with like an older person. I think it's maybe his family. His family, right? But it's like, like, look at the attempt to appeal to all these masses. Dad's he's got even a playing guitar band. on the far right. Oh yeah, he right. Is. So he's really this guy's done. But yo, shouts out this dude for doing his demo, right? Like this guy's yeah. done his demographic research, right? He's got the dog <laughs> peep the product placement. Yeah, the he 3D? owns whatever the fuck that is. Yeah, right. So whatever, and I've seen this. Is that um three D energy? Who is who? Who runs that? Do you uh, know them? No, is that Nunez. No, that's not three. That's three DMJ. DMJ. Oh man, that's much smarter than a pink energy drink. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, like, he's playing I would be coheed very on the guitar. If this guy doesn't have. If we go on this website, if they don't have sponsored ads or some bullshit or some sort of affiliation, oh for sure they do. Like maybe go to the gram or something. But you know that's that's clever shit. And this is where the conversation around amateur gets like the word amateur is. I think in itself a bit of an archaic term in the way most people think about it, or at least yeah. how my archaic ass thinks about it. It's like, like amateur is porn where the guy still has shoes on, right? Like that's what we think amateur. It's like shot with a baked potato. It's like, dude, this guy's whole angle from a marketing perspective. Like I guarantee you, if we fall, we pulled on a thread of this guy's website, he's got a fully loaded CRM automated email oh, series. Yeah. Like we got cookies on. We're going to start getting ads for this fucking guy. We're <laughs> going to sure. open up the gram in a second. And he's going to, so this guy's got it like sorted out. And who knows from a, uh, a quality of like marketing and things like that. Amazing quality of content, probably good if he's got that kind of following, but I'm just saying back in the day, if you were getting information, the likelihood that information was going to be of a higher quality and just the concentration, just because the effort, not that this doesn't take effort, but you literally go up to that YouTube thing and you go publish the video and it's up there Yeah. where it's like, I remember even when we started podcasting and this is a lot to do with my own ignorance and lack of finances, like the po posting a podcast is 10, a hundred times easier now than it was when I started six years ago. I used to go through a process called feed burner, which was like a 57 step process where now it's like, I don't know, Lundy handles. I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I close so, my eyes and I push a button. Right. It's a bodily function for you. But like, you know, to, I almost, I almost feel the need to apologize to like judge these people and like almost give them more credit than I think I was worth or I was worthy of when I started. Cause it was like, I fell ass backwards into like this, like what I, the goats, legends, yeah. right? Like people who look back now and it's like, we hold 
what we know about fitness to that standard, which is almost an unfair standard to hold fitness to. And I think like, you know, neither of us are like ancient in in fitness. Well, and maybe we're ancient in, in fitness, but I don't think we're ancient in training. Right. But I think where we got into training was so close to like the renaissance possibly of training or of like the push of information, right? Like if you, if we kind of played like six degrees of Kevin Bacon with the people that we looked up to as kids, there's like what one article, two articles or one book or two books prior to them talking right. where like something started. Like you got like say Paul Aquin, who's doing like sixes and fours and weird tempos. You go one step past Paul Aquin, It's like what Bill stars five by five. Right. And before Bill star, it's no one. Unless you're going east, like Eastern Bloc, sure. uh, John Egger, you're looking at yeah. plyometric training stuff, like really into the weeds. And then if you're in the West, you, you want to go that route, you go Louis Simmons, or maybe you're two years younger than me, you go Dave Tate, then you go Louis, and then you go Verkashansky. Right. And it's like, well, you're already at the source. But someone getting into it today is going Christian Guzman, John Meadows, John Meadows to... Mike Menser, Mike Menser to Bill Starr. It's like, well, that's four or five steps to get yeah. to the original source. Like we were just so much closer to the source. I almost feel like we started training the Tuesday before the Big Bang. That's like exactly before, how I feel. Before the fitness industry was even like an industry. And I'm sure it was still like, you know, I mean, I don't know what it's worth now with like the integration of technology and the fitness and Peloton and all that bull, like not bullshit. I mean, it's, it's hugely valuable, but like, I honestly feel like we were, yeah, like right at that inception point, that well, singularity moment where like YouTube and fitness and phones and the camera, like there was no phone that had a camera in it when I started training. It's funny, like I think of it as we started in fitness the day after they put labels on cigarettes. Cause like I started in fitness the day after Ripito became obsolete as anybody of information. So it's like, I feel like when people are like, wait, Ripito doesn't have a clue. That was like when they put labels on cigarettes and then ultimately the population got healthier. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's set in setting, right? Like when Ripito. you, hey, what'd you say? I just said Ripito. Oh my God. Could you not? Uh, I think when you start is going to obviously it's, it's, it's your environment, right? Like right, we can go to a gym and my training has been influenced drastically since being here. Cause it's like, we're surrounded by bodybuilders. Yeah. Right. Like I don't do much powerlifting anymore, but when I was at boss barbell, I didn't do much bodybuilding because I was surrounded by powerlifters. And it's like, right now it's like the environment that people I mean, check your screen time, check your screen times and compare it to how many hours you are in a gym. And yeah. now it's like, what really shapes the, the way people model their training is not necessarily their setting in real life where they're actually training, but where they're spending the most of their time, which is online. And I think too, like when we talk to Fuad, and like what I hear, you know, oftentimes in bodybuilding is this idea of like, if we use bodybuilding as an example, like bodybuilding in and of itself is, let's call it a sport. No, let's call it a competition. Bodybuilding is a competition. Yeah. But bodybuilding. It's a lifestyle. Also is correct. But some people would call it a lifestyle. And I almost give merit to that. Okay. And like, I give merit to the guys with like the hoodies on with the T Nation water bottle, that weird milk jug that yeah. they buy for $20 off T Nation. And like, they never take their hoodie off. They just train. They're cutting the chicken with the, with the scissors. What? When he was here, he yeah. had a, he had a, a fridge. Yeah. It was like a portable it fridge a on a fridge. generator. It had yeah. a fan. And yeah. then we had to bring him a fan. Like if the audio was shit on the Fuad episode, because he would not start, not that he wouldn't start it, but it would be much more comfortable if we got him a fan. That guy is a bodybuilder. But that's the thing. It, I don't think you're a bodybuilder unless you need a fan to talk to other people. hundred percent. But, and I think those were guys who got into it when it was Flex Magazine. When the dream is like, one day I'm going to get a photo shoot where they spray me down with baby oil. I put Tim's on and I lift in like an iron refinery. Right. Yeah. And, like and then I have three of my friends cheering me on. Yeah. Like the old Dominican New York guys, like yeah. the Victor Martinez, yeah. uh, John De La Rosa. And everyone's got jorts uh, on. Yeah. Right? No reason. Yeah. No. And everyone's half squatting five plates. Right. And there's sparks. Yeah. There's always it's, sparks in the background. There's sparks in the gym. Yeah. I'll get the fuck out. I'll pull the fire alarm, but I'm out. And if the sound was on, Tim Allen would be narrating like a Ford commercial or a Michigan commercial right. in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like that was an era of fitness that's gone now because I think there's people that enter into fitness now understanding the monetary side 
Right. Like we could pull up a YouTube channel right now. And I bet you at some point in the YouTube video, the guy will say, please comment below because it helps the algorithm. Like there are YouTube channels where the guy explicitly goes, comment below, like, share, subscribe. It'll really help the algorithm. They'll even say, you know, YouTube's changed how they're monetizing videos now. Like, share, subscribe below because it really helps the algorithm. These videos are hard to make for you. And it's like people are entering into fitness looking for the best bicep curl to do. And they're being... Uh, they're being brainwashed with this guy going like, like, subscribe, help the algorithm. And then they're seeing there's a monetary side to this. Right. And I think it's driving people to understanding like, if this is the the dynamite in the pond, then this is this is where I'm going to get my information from. But I also think too, on the flip side of that is people are, are way more reserved now to hit the subscribe button because they know there's a monetary link. The people yeah. are starting to realize that the biggest commodity is in fucking Dogecoin or oil or some jets yeah. etf the biggest commodity is their attention right so like i think because like, look at this it's so uniform like if we go it's very check aesthetic. our boy omar esoff lundo friend of the show soon to be on the show omar is the most esoff esoff isuf no 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 that's not that's <laughs> i think the way like these fitness youtube channels are now three crushing it and dude I have so much love for Omar. But when we look at these, like, what do you call those things? Lundy? Like the picture. Thumbnails. 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 That's what I wanted to get to. Sorry. If we look at these thumbnails, it's kind of that thing with porn. Like, you don't know why it's the right clip, but it's just something about it. And it's like these thumbnails are all kind of made in a way. Like, you're watching 15 seconds of each, and you accidentally settle on one you watch for the whole time. It's just something about these thumbnails that makes you want to click. All right, I'm gonna, I want to defend porn quickly. Is I don't think there's the thought process into the thumbnail photos. Wait, does porn have thumbnails? Don't pull this up. Oh, it does. does it's got it? those quick little previews, too. Are you, what are, you, are you doing like $10 a month stuff? Dude, it's, I don't pay. It's perfect all 10. free. It's perfect ten. It's, it's, always it's free. all free if yeah. you know how to use the internet like Lundy yeah. does. But like <laughs> I, like I, man, like I've done videos with Omar, so like I know that the thumbnail is a is a choreographed part of Correct. the production, right? So like just scroll down a little bit, uh, and let's just see. But there's such a uniformity, and I think this yeah. sells. This says more about us as consumers than it does about them as content creators, right? Like, well, yeah, I don't s- fault them. But this looks to me like if you look on Netflix, right? if you were to look on Netflix mm-hmm. and the never ending scroll, like there's been like six movie banner, uh, like layouts ever. And they've just been replicating them into infinity. Why? Cause they fucking work. Yeah. I was talking about this the other day. I was watching Netflix and like the intro to Netflix original shows, like the graphic and the music. I'm like, dude, it's one guy who makes all these. Cause they slap. Like you ever watch like a documentary series on Netflix and it's just the intro alone. You're like, yeah, this will make me come. And you're like, I'm, I'm locked in. Well, it's funny. I mean, you want to talk clicks when I did flagrant, let me pull it up the day before it went to publish. And like, this is how these guys think Schultz texts me and hand to God. I don't know if we can get this on. No, there's no way that's going to zoom in for that, is it? Lundy's shaking his you head. You can send me a screenshot and I can put it in and post. Oh, that's about it. So, literally, it, Schultz texts me Wednesday, May 19th at 5 35 p.m. Andrew Schultz texts me, goes, Steroids, everything you need to know with Muscle Doc Jordan Shallow. That's the title going up tomorrow. And I'm like, Schultz, he goes, Too wild? <laughs> and I'm like, Yeah, Maybe. too wild. And then he's like, All good. This is going to be most views. We don't have to go for most of you. And I could just see how I could hear his disappointment yeah. in his head of being like, dude, this is the whole fucking point is yeah. viewed. And it's like, I mean, he, he gets it right. Like he plays the game. He understands. And how many of these are, is this organized? No, this so is most recent. This is, this is uh most recent. Yeah. They all look re- like exactly the same, but if you go to his most popular, it's actually Nick. funny the, all the older ones obviously have more, but they don't have the same no. aesthetic. Thumbnail well, look. they've been around for a while, six right? or seven and, years. And yeah. this looks like this looks like seven, eight years ago, like dawn of the, yeah. the vlogger thumbnail. Like if you look at any YouTube channel from seven years ago, all the thumbnails are going to look very much like this. And it, I mean, shout out Omar because Omar was a pioneer. Like he was oh, doing yeah. this when the only other guy, fuck, what was his name? The guy who did stuff on the skateboard in fitness. Omar will come tell the story. Like fitness YouTube was not a thing. Omar made this a thing. Yeah. Like he was on the ground floor, but like now all of a sudden there's 
obviously a collected number of eyeballs on YouTube, period, right? Back mm -hmm. in his day when he started, like 20,000 subs was the biggest fitness, was the biggest fitness channel there was. Right now, Omar's looking at 843,000. And, you know, he's nowhere near, I would imagine, what some, I don't even know who the biggest would be right now. Like biggest fitness influencers on YouTube. Like it's got to be know. in the, ten, I would make tens of millions. What's like uh, so, Nick Strength and Power got? It's not necessarily fitness like influencer, but Nick for Strength, a, I've never even heard of this guy. Dude, 1.1 you know, one Schmel. And he's got this, shout out Nick Strength and Power, by the way. Like this guy fucking. Is this what's always playing in your crib? Yeah, I, I have this thing fucking on nonstop and I'm just sitting but around. look at the uniformity here, right? And dude, like, he crushes it like 10 minute max. So it's like he's getting that auto reload of his next video so quick on people if you get distracted. Yeah. That's like what happens to me. Like I look away and I've watched 19 Nick Strength and Power videos, but like he edits the fuck out of them. He's got a wicked voice and he just bangs this bodybuilding content out. But this guy's over a schmill for subs. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, two weeks ago. Scroll up a bit. Just kind of see the more recent ones. How, what's his frequency? 20 hours too. So he's like a video a day. Video yeah. A day, and dude, like. imagine Oof. a guy, imagine a guy whose YouTube account is him taking clips off of Instagram and commentating over them. Right. That's like uh, that more plates, more dates guy. That's all he does. Yeah. He's just like flames people for what they, yeah, that's all right. So my question is let's pull on the thread here from a monetary standpoint. Like can we get on his website and just be like, how does, how does this make money? Obviously, you know, YouTube's monetization strategy and I think he's, has uh, changed. I think he's Redcon actually. Okay. So he's, at one point he was pushing Redcon as the, like the in video ad. So, I mean, he's, but I mean, YouTube is going to monetize his ads for him. Yeah. What is that? Free delivery on what? All items. What does he sell? Probably some shirts. Just merch. Ooh. See, and this is squandered oh. opportunity, right? Like make a donation. So you're just going to give him money. Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah. To support the channel. For, for dollars socks. a day. So it's like Patreon. It's I better get a pair of socks. I don't even want, I just want something tangible. What is this? Golden era entry? Mr. Oh, his best golden era physique. So he probably doesn't even use this. Like this no. is 2018. He probably just goes off of YouTube yeah. monetization and That's shit. so interesting. But this really. is what we tell people. You just need that. This makes him immediately legitimate on the internet, right? He owns NickStrengthPower.com. That, that to me is a squandered business opportunity. I, I mean, I would love to know how much money he makes. Just out of the interest of like, I, what I was told by Omar, and this was years ago, and I'm sure it's changed, that if you have... I think Alora is That's on him? Yeah. But I think Alora, uh, shout out Alora, Big Three Media. I think her uh, uh, bodybuilding hockey cards were featured. Hey, there it is there. Yeah, top Look left. at that. Fuck this it one up. or this? Uh, no, that, that one, that one yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, shout out Big Three Media. Making it there big time with Can't that. Um, but yeah, I was told a dollar per sub. This kid's not making 1.1 a year. I, I don't know how fucking YouTube works, but I know this guy makes the bank. Well, I mean, I think it's when I was told that it was more so from an understanding of like leveraging a captive yes. audience into that, right? Yeah. So he, Omar even said, you know, male fitness influencer, pro, and this was years ago, an, a dollar per subscriber. It's probably less now. Like I think subs are just worth less. See, I would argue worthless. now that subs are worth more. Yeah, I was going to say more too. I would say they're worth more because people realize, like I said, that their attention is what's being monetized. I think people know now that like, especially men, Right. There's a Seinfeld joke. And this is back in the day when you can make jokes like this of why men are so afraid of homosexuality. It's because they have weak sales resistance. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they can be talked into anything. So I think like when you, and this is like, you got to go for, like, you got to sell from stage. Um, so if you're watching this, please do subscribe to this channel and the RX radio on Instagram. Yeah. But I think people know that they're, they're weak. I've done this. Like I have to delete Uber eats. I delete Uber eats once you a you week. do need to delete Uber Eats. Dude, it's you my whole back. Like <laughs> PayPal is this thing where I don't tell the government about it. And yeah. I just make these backdoor transactions for food I don't want to go get. That's my whole PayPal account is a conduit to shuttle my money, not towards the government, but into the pockets of Earl's. Earl's by my house gets all, they have a steak, steak and sushi combo. I mean, tenderloin and a spicy tuna roll. And it's good too. It's fucking phenomenal. And this isn't Can't even a commercial for Earl's, but I'm just saying like. But if it was. If, if it's sponsor it, the podcast. Yeah. Bring it on. Um, I'm just saying people know what their attention's worth. Like Uber Eats gets deleted frequently. Read it. Goat. If you, you have to delete that off your phone. I do. You I have do. to delete goat. Like you have to delete Uber Eats. Yeah. Cause I'm buying food. Like you're buying new joints. Yeah. You're true. That's right. True. So it's like, 
I think people to our to the earlier point, like I think people are more reluctant. Now there's more people. Yeah. This is where the value might be diluted and there might be an inflation of the perception mm -hmm. of that dollar, right? Because it's like there are more people who are going to YouTube, right? Like there there was a movie I couldn't find on it was a, a crazy not insane. Yeah. That documentary about serial killers. And I couldn't find it anywhere. Found it on YouTube, though. I found it on YouTube. And I could pay, and the first time I ever paid YouTube fourteen ninety nine to rent a movie or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. And I was like, man, this is this is powerful. So I think people are starting to realize, at the very least, they're helpless. They yeah. know that they can be talked into anything. Like, they know that each one of these thumbnails is set up in a way for them to just say yes and click. So they avoid it altogether. But I think to your point, there is a lot more people on these platforms. And I think the other thing that YouTube changed, especially in the fitness world, is it uh, just watching a video adapts to multiple learning styles, whereas a T Nation black and red fucking article, like why was that website so dark? Couldn't read shit on yeah, it half it the, the time. And it was made by someone in HTML or something. But it's like YouTube is audio and visual. Right. So, so many people can uptake more information off of YouTube than they can from reading an article. Because, like, I myself would go to T Nation, read an article, and then print it off, and then highlight all the needed information, and, like, carry it around with me. I think T Nation did that so it could sell you Plasma Jet. Yeah. That was the only yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. was white on the entire website. Yeah, Plasma Jet and that weird water bottle and some flavorless pre-workout that I was going to order from T Nation rather than just go to GNC and buy C4 like I always did. Like. Yeah. What's up with that website? Well, I just think too, like, I mean, look at us. Look at all this crazy bullshit. Look at this hardware. Wrong. Look at Lundy. There's a Lundy in this room. Why? Because we deem this stuff important. Because Rogan, when I used to watch it more often, I would watch it. Like it was, oh, I, yeah, I never, never listened, listened to, to Rogan on, on iTunes or Spotify. And it's cool now that he's on Spotify and you can kind of switch over to both. Like, and it can run seamlessly, but never once it was always i want to see what these people look like when they're talking yeah. i want to prove prove to me that it's real that it's uncut that it's not edited right so it's it, it is such a valuable medium and it's funny because people are always like what's next what's next what's next where it's like i don't even think we've begun to scratch the surface of like the reach and utility of a medium like youtube oh no it's crazy so you mentioned rogan so rogan had a guy on dan carlin who does hardcore history it's my favorite podcast and one of Dan Carlin's early jobs was actually selling the idea of YouTube in Silicon Valley. And it was amateur media. Right. And that's how he was trying to sell it to people. He's like, listen, it's a website that hosts videos made by teenagers for teenagers. You don't have to do anything. You just have to provide a place for them to upload videos. And he was doing this like at least a decade before YouTube came to fruition. And he was a journalist prior to doing this job. And he even said himself, he's like, this is, this is the end. Well, and, but it's also the beginning of the sharing economy, right? Like I think when I think YouTube, I think, you know, there's, there was this thing I saw years ago and it was like the biggest publishing house doesn't print its own yeah. books. The biggest video, the biggest network doesn't make its own yeah. films. The biggest cab company doesn't make its own this. And it was like the biggest hotel chain doesn't have a single room. Yeah. Right. So, but YouTube was the, and it was cats playing fucking piano <laughs> yeah. that set the stage for like what's known as like the sharing economy. Yeah. And it's just, it's so weird to me because I, I see the problem with YouTube almost different than the problem with say T nation, even though T nation is still a siloed environment of like, I don't know, I'm shouting out them so much, but a siloed environment of similar like articles, but when I go on YouTube, because I watch the same, I don't subscribe to anybody because I don't care, but I just watch the same videos all the time, that when I pull up YouTube, it shows you things that you might like, right. and I will never know things I might not like. So it's like, I'm just constantly going and being just given only information that I already agree with. So I think that stunts like the learning process in a way, right? Because it's like your views by your views. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's where the downfall is, and where... I Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and like what you were saying before is how much time do people spend on a screen versus in a gym? It's like, dude, when you went into a gym back in the day as a kid, like when I was 19, it wasn't my view on training, you know, subscribed to and curated by my view is what I thought training was. And then a bunch of bigger guys roasting me and yeah. like, 
you were confronted often with somebody telling you were doing something wrong, no matter how right you may have been doing it. And now I think that, that you're reinforced in your belief system because there's an algorithm that reinforces your bias. Correct. And it's like, it's not even, it's not a, even a, a conscious or willful uh, like construction of that bias because they're not going looking for it for themselves. No. It's being peddled to them by an algorithm because, oh, if you like Nick strength and power, and I don't know what the next related video would be, maybe you'd like Greg Doucette or yeah. maybe you'd like uh, the plates and dates buddy there. Like, and, and that to me is where I think you, you're seeing, uh, not a net, and I don't want to say negative, but like that's where you're seeing the shorter shelf life of people who are in the industry. Like this is such mm -hmm. a flash in the pan approach because you're not met with any objection. You're not yeah. like there were times where the bigger guy in the gym would come and roast me. Like oftentimes that was Luke. And I would, I would either have to have some sort of backing in logic yeah. to counteract what the bigger guy said. And for fucking years, Luke was bigger than me and still way stronger than me. And it was like, I, and that's part of the reason I am like in a position that I am today. Cause it's like, well, I'm not big enough to prove this to be true yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but how can I prove this to be true in some way that we can, or that some way that we qualify what truth means. Yeah. So then I had to go empirical with it or principles focus with it. And then I was like, obviously that set the path for like my career where it's like, I don't know if you'll have people with that that same level of drive because there's those barriers aren't set out for them. Yeah. And I think like we looked at just using Nick as an example, like he's a, a video a day. Like what's uh, there's like that, not Omar, but Nippard Jeff little. Yeah. And he's a newfie. We're going to try and get him on. He, yeah. He's fucked off to Mexico and Nippard probably posts like what once, if not twice. Nah, there's no way. I think he's got way too much production value in it. No, that like nothing, no shade against these guys, but he's got to be a once a week. Two point five million subscribers. Not 2. bad for kids from Newfoundland, eh? Hey, five schmill, and okay, yeah. so he's so he's yeah, one week, one month. Okay. okay, so he's like probably two, three a month, but production quality, he's right? Huge. So, I mean, he's not. Sorry, he's not. He's not. No, I didn't say he's huge. I'm saying oh, that's huge. Channels yeah. huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got but it's like because I've got so no, dude. This guy goes up to my waist. <laughs> Okay, no, he's never coming on the show. Um, um, but the thing with, like, what I see is the audience that I know that exists is, like, there are people that are waiting to post on Instagram until they watch the next Nippard video. What do you mean? Oh, like, it just as a reaction? No, it's just, like, that's all their content is derived of this guy doing it first. And oh. I'm not saying he's a trendsetter. Right. I'm just saying, and, like, dude, Nippard puts out great stuff. He gets a ton of, like, obviously high-quality people on. Metal Hanselman like all the 3dmj guys but it's like people are just sitting there at this point waiting for him to do it because they have the backing of he said it first right i mean we experience that to a certain degree right? no like, and, and i think it's unfortunate because what i realize and i don't know i fucking probably made some dumb post about it but it's the idea that like i've never made a statement and quoted someone else's name other than my own yeah like if well, i say something works in training it's because i said it yeah i don't start an <laughs> argument with well, you know, training to failure because Nippert said, like, who the fuck yeah. do you work for him? Yeah, the old like uh, three R I R tricep extension thing. Yeah, it's but it's like Louis Simmons may have quoted some Russian thing, but he quoted it after nine anecdotal paragraphs of everyone in his gym who benched over seven hundred. Right. And he's like, oh, by the way, there's also some Russian dude who said the same thing. Yeah, and I mean, part of it is like if we look at the evidence based model being like obviously empirical research, yeah. you know, anecdotal evidence or um, sorry, uh, empirical research, like professional like opinion or mm -hmm. your own personal experience and then like the values or belief system of whoever you're working with. It's the cadence and frequency in which YouTube videos in the fitness space and Instagram and TikTok and all this bullshit can go up. It's almost like people don't have enough time to gain personal experience, mm -hmm. to seem smart, to at least have two of the three pillars up there. Cause it's like, you know, that your, your clientele or the values are going to be decided by whoever decides to search and click on your shit where it's like a lot of people don't even have, uh, the empirical stuff. And I think what Nippard offers, and that's, mm -hmm. that's the value prop here 
is he offers the empirical almost completely. Like some level of science, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like if you click one of those things, I guarantee you at some point there's going to be a screenshot of, of a, a PubMed article yeah. or something like that. And he's going right? to bring some doctor on. So it's like, and this is where I, I kind of feel bad for, not feel bad, like he's obviously doing well, but if people were, you know, we talked about this in the past about credit, mm -hmm. right? If people were to credit him for curating that experience and you know mm -hmm. i'm sure his business is doing well so like not that he's hurting but i think he could do better because what people will do is they'll watch this video pull the and they'll article. just pull the sources yeah and then be like you didn't fucking read that yeah how many journals do you subscribe to are you paying pubmed for that article it's mm -hmm. like no you relied on and trusted that he read the full length yeah and then he posted it, and you just took a little clip and fucking put it out there because there are things where, because a lot of research is in the interpretation of the methods and things like that. Mm -hmm. There are things that he would put up that are like, oh yeah, I've read this and I came to a different conclusion or these 100%. methods are, are flawed. But it's like, I think because what is the proving ground? The proving ground isn't in the gym anymore. It's on the internet, right? So if I can just, I, I can show, and he's obviously in good shape, but like if I can show you a footnote citation in, you know, AMA style and a bibliography, it's like, that's, proof now which is like no no that's part of the battle is people aren't actually doing it enough in real life to garner or to gain the experience necessary to bolster up that part of that pillar that pillar of evidence so i mean it's good on him i don't know if it was a preemptive or premeditated uh thought process in building this channel mm -hmm. but that's where he's providing like a lot of the value is just being able to provide people with the empirical evidence they need to go win an argument in their proving ground yeah, and it's just, it's weird because I don't remember that when we started. Like, I don't remember an article being cited. I don't remember fucking, obviously there was no YouTube. It was just Paul Quinn saying something because something. Well, I mean, the citations was the, like you said earlier, the medal winners. And if there yeah. was an article that Paul Quinn was referencing, it was like in French. Yeah, you're never going to translate yeah, it. Like, Same thing with Louis, right? Like everyone who tells you soviet training systems it's like well they're written in russian it's the catholic church of fitness no nah, it's the it's the mormon <laughs> someone can read the golden tablets or whatever the fuck yeah and it's like louis is the only guy who speaks turkmenistanese or whatever the fuck yeah. and louis goes all right well we're gonna do two by ten max effort sumo pin pulls all right why because the turkmenistan journal published in 1943 it was like all right and then Louis from there, whether it was bullshit or not, was able to turn out, you know, the, the craziest, like if West side was its own country, it would have been the strongest country in the world. For sure. I, I think the other thing too, like just as we're looking at these videos and we're talking through this idea that we had now, the other thing I realized with YouTube, with just like the self populating related videos is like you said, the proving ground used to be in the gym and the way you confirmed or denied something you read would work was trying it in the gym. But that's because there was one article. Right. Like, dude, you and I remember, I could Google 10 years ago, like, best, and I definitely did this, best tricep exercise. And there was, like, one article, and that so, article was probably, like, then shared on three or four websites. Right. And I was like, okay, well, now I have to go do this. But on YouTube, you'll read something or watch something, and before you even get off YouTube, you've watched three other videos either confirming or denying the thing you first read, and then you don't even know what the fuck you're going to do when you get to the gym. Lundo, it's not your fault. best tricep exercise. Let's just see as like a... What it could possibly be. Right. Guess how many views. And that's it'll be you, nine different guess? exercises. I'm going 10 million plus in the views. And it'll be... We'll see such a differing amount. Oh, oh for sure, Jeff Cavalier. Yeah, whatever, man. Let's see if we can... Let's not going watch off views? How are we doing this? Rating, maybe? Rating? That never works. Oh, this one's the best. Body what Blitz. That's for this? sure the best that's, one. That's, that's, Dude, we got to go off views. Can't go off rating. I don't this know how better. to Just do this. Views. This is good. Horseshoe, that's One good. Point yeah. What was that one? That was 3.1 This is 3.5. Athlete. So, I mean, it looks By like... the way, it's both the same dude. So seven million people have watched this guy do a fake tricep exercise. Right, and we're probably with fake apart. weights. I'm okay with throwing shade to this guy. Oh yeah, dude, he's fake yeah. weights all the way. All right, who do we got? Hey, there's oh, four point seven. This guy V Shred. Never oh. heard of oh, him. Oh, right? this guy is he Canadian? I don't know, but he's in my fucking Instagram ads all the For time. Sure. This guy's oh, like, he's like the fucking Kino Body. Oh, yeah. No, guy. he is. He's, this guy's yeah. like the infamous ripoff artist, dude. Yo, I think we should bring Kino Body into the studio and just beat him with phone books. 
<laughs> oh yeah she's got it figured out for women because women have different arms than men Don't god bless man. you but yeah this is the idea of like you know how do you choose priesty and this is where and that would be the video i'd pick that would be the one Who's right there the, one? Got the biggest arms that look like dennis wolf yeah but like <sighs> that's not that that might actually turn out oh, bump studs in there yeah Shout out bump stud but i think you know to your point how is Oh, Meadows. Meadows. How, how do you choose, right? And that's the thing. Like, before you'd even get to the gym, you'd be like, I don't even know what to do now. Yeah, there is a... I mean, I'm surprised. Like, if I was the way I was when I was uh, when I was younger, now, and like, let's say I was 16 now, I would be crippled. I would just move yeah. on to a different hobby because it's like, I would look at all this and I'd be, oh, he's definitely got the answer. <laughs> The guy doing dips on a treadmill? Like, get the fuck out of here. Six views. Six. Good for you. Yeah, they 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 go What's his name? Let's he give him a shout. AK, AK, Fitness, AK Fitness, Series. Fitness Series. There's a dude there who has Crushing no views. Crushing it. Oh. Look at this. Coming at you live from Bangalore. How many videos? Oh, amazing. Three videos. This oh, he just started four days ago. Just, you know what? Dude, go give him a sub. Yeah, this sub to AK push Fitness up, Series. Work up, preacher curl. Like, unbelievable. He's almost ahead of us at this point. This guy's crushing on the views. He's tire on the back? Donis. Unbelievable. But yeah, so like I would be crippled. So I almost I give a shout out to, to anyone who made it off of YouTube and into the gym. Who just does the I mean that's always been my thing is like yeah. to anyone who does the damn thing. Right? Whether right or wrong. It's just if it's wrong, maybe you just found haven't found the right YouTube video yet. And that might be it. Right? It's, go ahead and be like our boy AK <laughs> Fitness out there in Bangalore. Yeah. And just do it yourself. Because, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like when we were talking to Andy, the other, I've, I, every single person I've talked to since we sat down with Andy O'Brien was like, this is, I would argue, one of the smartest guys in the world when it comes oh, to training. yeah. Like another another goat that most people don't know of because he's been too busy just turning out the best athletes <laughs> yeah, actually, on the planet. Actually doing his job. Right. <laughs> Start and, there. But he said, like, look, at best guess, and it's funny because he even broke down the statistical analysis that they use to yeah. get to this number. So he wasn't even pulling this out of his ass. The best bet we know 15% about like mechanisms and training outcomes. Yeah. And that's him saying it. So we know like 2%, yeah. maybe if and we're lucky. And this guy turns out Stanley Cup winners year, year after year. Year after year for decades. And he's admitting to knowing 15% of the answer. And then this is where like, this is where I've just stopped arguing with people. Cause like I know kids in grade school yeah. that then there was a handful of them and they're, I think they're still in grade school that would get 15% on a test. Yeah. You know what those kids didn't do? Argue about what they got right. Yeah. Those kids who got 15% on their social studies test in the sixth grade got their exam back and went, yup, does anyone want to go play kick hockey outside with a tennis ball? But you know what they did do is go start fitness <laughs> YouTube channels. <laughs> right. But it's like, what is that saying um, from The Rock? Winners lose or uh, okay. losers complain about their best, and winners go home and fuck the prom queen. It's like, yeah, those guys, Captain Fifteen Percent, not wasting time arguing about it. Just on to the next video, on to the next thing. So it's like, at the end of the day, does it really matter? I, I have always argued that nothing matters. Right, the fit. You're the fitness nihilist. I am. Yeah, and, but I'm, I'm I think they're throwing the ferret in the bathtub. There. <laughs> obviously you're not a golfer but when we look at this like i think it's so you can get lost in the sauce and the clicks and things like that and each one of these i guarantee you, if you're not doing tricep extensions or you're not doing tricep work one of these will do it yes one of these in lieu of not doing anything will be the best one you've ever done and i'll tell you the commonality between every one of these videos is it's a tricep exercise right that's it that's the thread look for the commonality not the difference they're probably all a tricep exercise. So maybe do a tricep exercise. Yeah. Like I succumbed at a young age to thinking I would never have triceps because I didn't like doing skull crushers because I didn't know how to do them. And here we are. And I still don't have triceps. None. Because I just Not doubled down on like it's never going to happen yeah. for me. You did qu I like quads. You got it. <laughs> I figured out how to do quad real big, well. Big, big quad guy. Um, but yeah, like the one thing that won't grow your triceps is scrolling through YouTube. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I, I want to give deference and like hope to those people because... We've been, we were just lucky that yeah. we came up in the time that we did. Like we didn't ask Zuck to come up with Facebook and all no. this bullshit when it came up. We had to kind of learn it 
in a way that may have been more difficult or harder to access material, but we were as impressionable. Mm -hmm. We were just under the impression of people who had to work harder to get their opinion out there. Yeah. Right? Like if, we were, if I was coming up now, you know, maybe I'd be a big AK fitness and we, we'd be doing the Bangalore bicep curl or whatever the fuck. But it's, you know, we came up in a time where there was just the, the few who could navigate this terrain were so successful because they had Olympic athletes or they mm -hmm. had, you know, they had winning the Super Bowl or Stanley Cup uh, or Lombardi Trophy or the Super Bowl, same thing, uh, winners. And you're like, oh, these guys were risen to the main platform of our day which yeah. was the worst black with yellow font yeah. TV, which is still the same yeah they never changed what's up can that? we because I, I think they're hold, they're holding on to the past i think they're making it difficult for people to still relatively consume this information but i think you know there there is more noise in the current landscape but i think that the the signal that matters the message that matters is just going out and doing it yeah and that was something that was much more in your face as a carry over message mm -hmm. whether it was Pollockman, whether it was louis whether it was dave um now it's like you know let's discuss in the comments below there was no place never. for discussion there's never there a comment forums. section there was forums and it was how to boil trend from their cow farm say. into an injectable version with yeah. your buddies that was what the forums were <laughs> Right. There was not, there wasn't really room for discussion. Discussions happened in person in training. And it was basically the guy with the bigger triceps won. And that yeah. was the YouTube comment section. I still remember training. Like when I started going to the gym and like, I wasn't huge into training when I was in high school. When I started going to the gym, I had a friend in high school, had huge fucking arms. I had a friend in high school, had a huge fucking chest and a friend in high school who had a huge fucking back. And I would train chest with one guy. I wouldn't train arms with him. And then I trained back with another guy who I never trained chest or arms with. Because I was like, well, that's the arms guy. I'm going to train arms with him. I'm going to train chest with that. I'm going to train back with this guy. And train legs by myself because I had big legs. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, the opinion that one was the fucking dude who was big. And that will be how, that no matter how much evidence, research, technology. <laughs> no. As long as we're not sentient fucking robots, like that will be the way we ultimately make decisions. Right, even this is the way YouTube has made decisions on what we watch. Yeah. That's because that's the way we make decisions on who we want to listen to. So, I think as a takeaway point, if you're getting into this, if you're if you ever feel like you're not as experienced as someone, like that's how we feel. Yeah, we sat down with I would argue two of the best strength and conditioning coaches ever, and two and of probably generally smartest people. Yeah, and and they're still active. Yeah, right. And they both like the level of humility that they approached it and the level of like, Oh, like, what do you guys think? What does it matter? What I think, yeah, let me go check my Stanley cup rings me. that I yeah. don't have. And, but now it's like, people can be so definitive. So if you feel like, I mean, I think it's an insecurity that everyone feels, but I think this day and age, you're more entitled to feeling that way because you do have to sift through. So just do the damn thing. I think is my takeaway, which I don't, I don't, I think there's a positive spin. This is a positive I, I don't one? think so. I think if we were to look at this and like go back to Andy O'Brien's thing, I think you'll only ever get 15% of your success from reading something. You'll get the rest of the 85 from being in the weight room and doing it yourself. Right. But I think as a whole on this podcast, this is the more uplifting, optimistic message we've had. This is the one positive podcast we've done. Okay. Done. You guys we did it. Seen. We did done. it. Done. Close. All take right. it down. Let's, let's record. Let's record one really negative one after this. Yeah. All right, guys. And on that note, so I don't know. We we're looking at numbers now because we have the studio and all that stuff. Uh, do hit subscribe. Yeah, Are we like subscribe and comment below for the algorithm. For the algorithm. But honestly, guys. though, because we've been on uh, Spotify and iTunes for a long time, yeah, and we get a lot of listens, but I don't think we actually have. So if you listen to this routinely, I just want to see this particular week if we could see a spike in subscribership. If the people who listen to it also subscribe, because I feel like our stats don't really match up. So if you listen to it and you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. Do me a favor. And uh, come watch it on YouTube. And then come watch it on YouTube. And please and watch it on it. YouTube because believe it or not, me and Jordan actually get dressed to do this fucking podcast. I'm going to put those shoes on when we record next week. We're going to ask you what shoe is on the shelf. Done. <laughs>